I am not sure if you heard the good news, but the borders are opening early. So I just wanted to do a shout out to that uh, at the beginning of this video to let you guys know, hey, you guys can come here sooner than you thought. So if you're Australian, you can come next month in April. If you are pretty much the rest of the world, all the, the bigger countries, you can come May 1st. So that's for travelers and for visa holders. So New Zealand is finally opening up and you guys can come here and check it out. So if you are moving here or traveling here, make sure that you reach out to me. I have lots of resources to help you. Definitely check out my other videos. Um, and yeah, and all the links are below if you're interested in any of that, but I'm so excited that you guys get to come to New Zealand sooner. All right, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. I'm so excited to have Robin on with me today from the New Zealand Pocket Guide. He's so cool and their website is amazing and it has everything that you need to travel in New Zealand. I mean, down to the minute details and it's all free. You should check it out for sure. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and then we'll jump into some tips for traveling around New Zealand. Um, so I've been in New Zealand for about 11 years now. I've been in the tourism industry for pretty much the whole time. I speak way too fast and I'm passionate about traveling in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, nice. you can see that on our YouTube and on the site. Yes, so you should definitely check out their site. Anything that you need to know about travel, I've used it many times. It's super helpful, so you'll definitely want to check that out. So today, though, we're going to talk about travel tips. I just thought, of course, if I have Robin, who knows everything about traveling around. Now, I've been to most places in New Zealand, um, but I don't you know, know it as the ins and outs of it like he does. So we're going to get some travel tips in today. So here we go. All right, so the first thing that I have for you guys, and that's, that's, that's the worst one, but you have to be up to date with the COVID-19 uh, restrictions in New Zealand. And the best place to get up to date with the COVID-19 restriction is covid19.govt.nz. It's the official New Zealand government website. And that's, you know, yeah, as well yes. get information from the source. We cannot wait until the borders open and people can travel. So hopefully. Yes. Hopefully when you're watching this, you can travel. <laughs> yes. And hopefully as you're watching that, you are currently planning your itinerary because like yeah. now we have plenty of time to just plan yeah. our itinerary. And uh, that brings my second tip okay. uh, to light. And it's planning a realistic itinerary. If you only mm. have a week in New Zealand, you can only do one of the both islands. It, it would yes. be absolutely crazy to yes. try to cram two islands into one week. So the bare minimum, the absolute minimum of time that you need to do both islands is two weeks. Um, we have plenty of um, uh, samples of itineraries on the site. Yes, if you guys want to check it out. But seriously, just make sure that you plan yourself a realistic itinerary. Otherwise, you're just going to drive, drive, drive and just spend night somewhere and have no time to do anything. Yeah, else. no, that's really good advice. I would even say even half of one of the islands for a whole week. And this is the other problem with Americans that travel here is that they they plan their trip to Australia and they think, hey, I'm just going to do a stopover for a yeah. week or less in New Zealand and not a good plan. I'm telling you. I have so many people that have visited me from the States and they're like, I don't know why we spent all that time in Australia. I mean, Australia is great, has its benefits, but New Zealand is stunning. That's why I did my first experience in New Zealand. I was doing a working holiday in Australia and I was like, oh, I can just pop into New Zealand before I leave and just do everything in one week. Learn from my mistake. No, Learn from it. All right, next tip. When you're coming to New Zealand, uh, make sure that you know which visa you need or if you are from a visa waiver country, meaning mm. a country that doesn't need a visa to visit New Zealand, you need to pay the NZETA and the IVL, uh, which is a levy. Anyway, there is some fees to pay. Make sure that you're aware of those things. It's oh, the boring part. Oh, that's good to right know. Now. I didn't even yeah. know that. Yes. You, I think I'm from a country that I don't have to pay that. You, you do actually have to pay that. Oh, yes, on the visa. But that's okay. I hate it. Move on. <laughs> Are, you, <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I paid a lot of money to get here. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. But so if you come in New Zealand with a visa, like IE as an immigrant, uh, yes. as an immigrant and everything, this is all included. You don't it's have to. It's all included. That. Okay, I'm talking this is about why visitors and everything. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She like... can stay. She can stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yes. I didn't come as a visitor. I came as an immigrant, and I already paid my fees. Okay, while we're talking about the boring stuff, when you come into New Zealand, there is a very strict biosecurity rules yes. on, on what you can and cannot bring into New Zealand. So make sure that you read up on that. There is plenty of literature online. I'm not going to point my own website again, yes. but um, yeah, there's plenty of literature online. There's plenty of photos at the airport. There is plenty of information. 
Uh, and if you are unsure, declare it. So, just yes. give an example, right? Let's say you are bringing a gun into New Zealand. You shouldn't, but let's say you're bringing a gun and you don't know if you can do that or not. If you declare it at the border, they will inspect your luggage, they will check it and mm. they will tell you you can't bring it and they will ask you to surrender it. You won't be fined because you declared it. However, oh. if you bring a gun to New Zealand and you don't declare it and you try to sneak in past and they find it, then the fines are heavy, strict and you may even be denied entry to New Zealand. Oh. So let's not do that. When in doubt, declare. Exactly. All right, uh, next tip, let's talk about some more fun stuff. If you're planning to travel around New Zealand, there's plenty of method of transportation mm. available to you. You can take buses, you can fly around, you can rent your own car, you can buy a car if you're here for an extended period of time. There's plenty of ways to make your way around New Zealand. So make sure that you research even before you start making your itinerary, which method of transport you want to use, mm. and then go from there. It's the best way to plan an itinerary. There's even some bus tours which literally have everything included. The itinerary is already done, and therefore you have nothing to do. Just Sit, put your bum yeah. in the seat and enjoy. So I, so do most travelers rent a car? I guess that's what we talked about earlier. So most people rent a car or they're doing the bus tour. Yes, yeah. yes, that's the two main method of transport in okay. New Zealand. And uh, that's the two best ways to also see most of the country as well, uh, traveling right. by land. Flying around New Zealand just doesn't really give you the best experience because New Zealand, and you know that yourself, yeah, that's it's true. all about road trip. Even just driving up to here, it's it just fantastic. Amper vanning it, or like even just the public buses are good. You know, um, some of the cool trains that go across islands are cool if you like that sort of thing. Now, when it comes to the nitty gritty of planning your trip, it's all about picking the right time of the year to plan your trip. New Zealand is notoriously busy during December to February. This is yes. when most of the tourists are coming in New Zealand and also when most of the locals have, well, the Christmas holidays um, and it's summer as well. So you, you max all that together, Christmas holidays, summer, all the tourists coming over. This is becoming really, really busy. So everything is more expensive. Everything is more cramped. So you're going to pay more for a less good experience. So traveling during the shoulder season which are basically a couple of months uh, either mm -hmm. way so basically not in december to february will be ideal save you big bucks and give you a better experience yes totally because everybody goes back to school in the beginning of february so february march april amazing weather to be traveling and it won't have so many travelers so yes However, if you don't have any other option and you have to travel in right, summer, right. just book in advance. Do not expect that you're going to be able to find easy oh, accommodation in advice. Lake Tekapo, in Queenstown, in those yes. kind of really hot spots uh, in, you know, in the middle of the summer. You won't and it's going to be tough to find accommodation. So book in advance if you travel in summer. Okay, good. Do you travel often in summer? Um, I do because I have kids, but um, when we first moved here, I was homeschooling some of them, and so we were able to travel in the off season, and that was so much better. So much you guys, better, yeah. so much better. And even just the hikes are less crammed, and everything is so so much better. So much better. All right, moving on. Uh, if you are traveling on your own, i.e., you're not taking a bus tour that is already organized for you, consider traveling south to north. So most travelers mm. travel north to south because the main port of entry to New Zealand, and I mean port of entry as airport as well, is Auckland, which mm. is relatively north of the country. So most people are actually traveling north to south. So if you travel south to north first, you're going against the grain, so you get less people on the road and all that kind of things. Also, you may be able to find some better deals for your car or camper van rentals because, well, at the end of summer, a lot of companies end up having all their inventory on the south island and they need to find a way to bring it back up yes. and therefore you'll be getting better deals to go from south to north that's Some really good advice you guys even that's pay really good advice yeah. yes so yeah that's a i mean that's something yeah, that that's we advise really everybody idea. speaking of camper vans uh, yes. you can't just camp anywhere it is uh, a myth freedom camping is a thing in new zealand but there is rules to yes, freedom camping rules, yes. so uh yeah I, I, I won't go into details about all the different rules because they're mostly by different districts mm -hmm. uh, but we do have a full page on NZ Pocket Guide and I'll point okay. that to you guys because it's too boring to talk about but Wait. you can't camp anywhere but my uh, you can camp everywhere you can you can't you can't you cannot camp everywhere right is there a country that you are allowed to do that because to me I don't I, I don't think I would ever come in and think oh I can just camp anywhere um, so I mean, are there certain the people coming in thinking, oh, I should just be able to throw up my tent? Yeah, um, well, from the top of my head, like Madagascar is a great country to be able to do that. Oh, uh, really? You will, but, but it's kind of almost cheaper to stay with locals or stay in accommodations and everything, but you are yeah. able to camp pretty much everywhere. Um, you go along the road, they have main highway and everything, so yeah. Oh. But yeah, don't do that in New Zealand. 
Uh, next tip, what do we have? Always carry an extra layer. New Zealand is famous for four seasons in one day, isn't it? The weather in New Zealand is so changeable. How cold were you this morning? I know. How hot are you right now? <laughs> I know, I know. I was so cold. The weather changes throughout the day. It'll be like so hot and then we'll have a rainstorm and then, yeah, definitely. Definitely have that light fleece, that light layer that you can always throw on. Yes. All right. If you need to buy alcohol in New Zealand, a little bit like in the US, you will always be ID'd. In New Zealand, there's only three forms of IDs which are going to be accepted. It's going to be the New Zealand driver license, the hospitality 18 plus and your passport. If you have any or other form of IDs, i.e. your US driver license or anything like that, it will not be accepted and you won't be able to buy your beer. So just know that if you want to have a bit of a bender by the beach or something like that, can't do that if you Is don't have the correct true? ID. Yep. Can't what, was, what was the second thing that you said? The Hands 18 Plus card. It's a Hospitality New Zealand oh, it is. 18 oh, Plus card. Okay. Yeah. So this oh, one's accepted. That's a good tip. I did yeah. not know that. Uh, you can apply for it. So if you, you have to bring your passport to go to the bar? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm st we you are still being checked. You tell I hang checked. out in bars. <laughs> I am still being checked and, and I do look damn old and uh, I'm still being checked regularly. Oh, uh, that's on my, rough. Uh, I'm not checked. I'm not checked. You're, not, you're not? It's because, it's because they... No, it's because they, they don't. My, yeah. Yeah, they see all my kids. <laughs> no, don't it's worry. I'm they not don't see you at the bar. <laughs> they don't, I'm the not bar. going to the bar. It's true. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on. Oh, what these is, are great tips, you guys. Thanks all right. For Next up, when you plan your trip around New Zealand, yeah. choose the right type of accommodation for you. So everybody travels differently and in New Zealand there is a breadth of different type of accommodation. Um, hostels are great. You can get private room in hostels. So that means mm. you don't have to litty stay in dorms and you can make use of their communal kitchen. It's a great way to save money when you're on the road. Um, motels are usually more self-contained units. Uh, you have a campsite where you can have powered campsite for your camper van or even unpowered campsite. And you still have access to all the facilities. You can have self-contained units if you want. And obviously we have everything from the luxury lodge to the boutique hotel um, and, and everything in between. So there's a ton of different type of accommodation so don't get restricted to the thing that you know you may want to try something different for your trip to New Zealand save some big bucks try something new and uh, yeah yeah so it's, it was cool about the campgrounds here like because it's it's hard to I would say that New Zealand travel is really set up for couples and that when you when you have a big family it gets harder and so like we have a campground they have these like communal kitchens like that might be normal in yeah. Europe but um, I was like oh this is so cool I love it because I'm a people person and love to meet new people and you know, but my kids were like, what, what, what? So it's good for them. That's really cool. Yeah, and if you don't feel like tenting, uh, 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 we do know a lot of families which are traveling around and they just go in a hostel and they literally hire a private dorm of six. And you get a six dorm over okay, there. Okay, I've seen there. that and yeah. I've never done it. Should oh, I be well, doing that? Yeah, I mean, you will uh, You will actually save money on accommodation. Oh yeah, Definitely I know I would. To, to a holiday park. You have access to the kitchen. So if your kids are gluten-free or any dietary requirements, yeah. you can cater to them easily That's by doing true. that. That's and, true. Uh, yeah, and like that, you don't mm -hmm. have to hire an expensive camper van or having to do a whole setup with the tent and everything like that. You literally just rock in with your That's car. That's really a good option, you guys, because honestly, like if you're, if the plot of land at a campground is expensive. Yeah, when you it add all these people to it. I'm like, I'm just gonna stay somewhere that yeah. has walls. Hi hiring hiring a dorm in uh, like a six bed dorm in uh, in the in a hostel in a will hostel, cost yeah. you about hundred and twenty dollars to hundred and fifty dollars at most. You heard it here first. Here you go. If price changes by the time you watch this video, don't hold me accountable for it. <laughs> yes. Term and conditions apply. Support local. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Speaking of buying things, when you buy things in New Zealand, pay in New Zealand dollars. Uh, you know, when you use your credit card and everything, choose the option New Zealand dollars. If you can withdraw some money, it's easier. Don't change your money at the airport. All that kind of tip that you probably heard a million times. Be wise with your money. Bank fees add up to a lot when you travel around. Yeah. And if you stay for quite a while in New Zealand, i.e. you are a backpacker and stay on the mm -hmm. working holiday visa, open a bank account here. Make it easy for yourself. Get yourself mm -hmm. a local um, debit card. It's going to make your life super easy. Yes, do that. That's really good advice. All right, uh, now we're going to talk about New Zealand road rules uh, that oh, you love geez. a lot. So yeah, be aware of the New Zealand road rules, like do a little bit of research. There is like, let's say about 10 points that you need to know about and that you need to kind of just have read at least once. Uh, you know, if you're, new, if you're not used to driving on the left side of the road, which is the wrong side of the road, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> it's okay. Just make sure that you start driving very slowly and yes. just kind of get used to it. Honestly, it comes really quickly. A lot of people are super stressed about that. Yeah, I was but, number one stressed about yeah, that. But it does, it does kind of come really fast, And it fast, really right? was not yeah. a problem. Yeah. Honestly, you guys, it was not a problem. Yeah, so be aware of how to use roundabouts if you have not 
not use the roundabout because you are used to grid system. It's absolutely fine. You just need to kind of watch the traffic for about 20 seconds yeah, just and take your time. get used to it. Same thing for one way bridges and everything. It's all kind of self explanatory, but yeah. you may want to have self explained it to yourself before you're on the car and you stress don't about it. Don't just pull out because you don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't keep driving because you don't know what to do. That's even worse. That could lead to an accident or something. Yes. So do neither. Um, okay, and a couple saying. things to note about the roads is people stop for everybody. Okay, so if you're from like New York or Chicago, you're like, well, it's happening. They're always like, let them in, let them, everybody lets everybody in. Even in the most dangerous situation, they let them in. So just be aware, everybody's nice and they drive quite a bit slower um, than I'm used to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And okay, I like, thought they drove faster than I used to. Oh, no. Oh, oh wow. I am like, ugh. anyway. Yeah, you should. Okay, that's another. <laughs> that's another she video. can stay. She's driving. <laughs> she's driving fine. Okay, this well, they have all these cameras. They keep the and then all of a sudden you get a ticket in the mail. Yep. You get lots of tickets in the mail. Yeah. And not for many kilometers over. I, 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 don't like I am it. fully aware and sometimes they send the tickets to the wrong address which is years old and then they call you and they say hey you owe us that much because there's a lot of late fees and that happened to me recently fun times anyway moving on um let's not talk about that please and thank you let's talk about cyclists what about you You use a bike instead of uh, instead of using a car because uh, you know you want to um if you are a cyclist and you dream about uh, roads biking all around new zealand don't stick to the mountain bike trails and all the other bike trails that we have around New Zealand. They're all really fantastic. The New Zealand roads tend to be uh, a little bit narrower. There's gravel, there's all that, and, and there's a lot of trucks around and everything. Yes, it doesn't true. make for good road biking no. experience. I know the dream sounds amazing, you know, but it's it's not the Instagram, pic Instagram picture that it looks. So no, but like they do, if you're in the cities like Wellington, people ride their bike to work yes. and come back, and they don't have any room. So. But there is more bike lanes coming up. So, yeah, there are. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah. It's fun times. Advice. Doesn't mean you can't, but we don't recommend it. <laughs> All right, speaking of another fun time, yeah. money, budget. New Zealand can be more expensive than what you expected. Uh, we are a very small uh, island nation. Importing things is quite expensive. Gas is so expensive at the moment. I love that you said gas. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> gas at the moment. Uh, what did I pay? I paid $2. 48 cents per liter, which is 3.6 to a gallon. So here you go, multiply that by 3.6. If you're a genius, put it in the comment below. She wants some comments. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Comment call. Uh, but yeah, it's super expensive. Uh, yeah, the gas, for example. Expensive, yeah. The gas is expensive. Yeah, comment. I would say just travel in general is expensive. Yeah, yeah and even just getting pop drinks and everything like that is not gonna be. Oh. It's not gonna be cheap uh, compared true. to what you used to. Uh, I mean, literally, I came from uh, North America, arriving to New Zealand, and mm. that was a shock money-wise. So yeah, shock. just just be aware. Uh, that doesn't mean you should pack all the food that you can in your suitcase to come to New Zealand. That Don't would be a silly that. thing to do. But uh, yeah, just be aware that you will need a decent budget in order to make your way around New Zealand comfortably and have fun. Yes. All right. I, I love how I'm just saying all the bad things right now and just like nice and friendly right here. I feel like I'm a, no, I'm a downer really right here. really good tips because people You need to hear that. It doesn't mean you say it's not amazing. It is. It is really fantastic. I promise. But I need you guys to know those things. These are the insider tips. All right. Um, another thing that you need to be aware of. Uh, when you are planning your trip around New Zealand and you check the GPS and it says, oh yeah, driving from point A to point B is going to take you an hour. Plan two. Uh, first up, you're going to drive a bit slower than what you plan because, well, Told there's going to be people in front of you and all that. And second, the sceneries are fantastic and there's plenty of uh, pit stops along the way that you're going to want to stop, yeah. take some pictures and all that. New Zealand is all about the journey around the I know yeah. it's a saying, I know it sounds so cliche, but New Zealand is genuinely about the journey traveling around. And so I feel like you're gonna enjoy it much more if you take your time. Yes, and there's so many windy roads, you guys. Yeah, so. and Google Map is terrible. It's notoriously bad in New Zealand. We've got lost multiple times. So if you have the spare few dollars to download like the Garmin map or something like that on the on the app store or something, mm -hmm. or the TomTom -Tom map or whatever other brand, it's not yeah, sponsored, yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's um, a good idea. Yeah, definitely get one of the real GPS map. A will yield yeah, a better be result better. for your trip. Speaking of, you know, the landscape and everything, if you come to New Zealand, you're coming for the nature, not for the cities. If you're planning to just go from city to city in New Zealand, you're not really going to see what New Zealand is all about. Yeah, it's all yeah. about the beautiful nature, the beautiful sceneries, the mm -hmm. awesome hikes and all these kind of things. So just know that. 
uh, if you're here to come and party and go nightclubs and everything like that, you may have a couple of fun nights in Queenstown, but that's going to be nowhere near the fun night you can get near. in Las Vegas. So nowhere what about near. you go party in Las Vegas with yes. Dr. Dre? There you go. <laughs> See, I'm with the kids right here. Dr. Dre is in GTA now. I know things. I know <laughs> things with the kids. Play GTA Online with Dr. Dre. Who? Um, no. <laughs> All right. When traveling in New Zealand, uh, make sure to protect yourself from the sun and the sun fly. Look oh. at that. I, ch I moved from Dr. Dre to PSA. Whew. I know. Awesome. What a transition. He's anyway. A professional. Uh, sand flies can be uh, notoriously annoying, especially in the yes. South Island, around the Nelson Lakes area or things like that. So just a sand fly repellent will work. It generally does work. You just have to be aware and use it. And also there is some fantastic soaps which are natural mm. and include uh, sand fly repellent in it. Can oh, really? On, yes, you Americans can find that on Amazon. Very easy for us in New Zealand. We have to import them from Amazon and that's really expensive. So very sad. So you guys are lucky. Pack that. Oh. That'd be good. And for the sun, there is the hole in the ozone layer. Everybody knows that if you were a kid in the 90s, you saw a lot of PSAs on TVs about these kind of things. And Captain Planet with his ring was trying to save the planet for that. If you ever <laughs> watched that cartoon. Anyway, I am, I am young for sure. Anyway, um, <laughs> there is a hole in the ozone layer. It's right on top of New Zealand. You can burn on up to seven minutes only. So make sure you use sunscreen, sunscreen and sunscreen for sure. And we yes. apply every couple of hours. Yes, no, you guys, it literally feels like it's burning through your skin. It's it, yeah. Bring your sunscreen and load it. I mean, I don't know. I've been here for six years. I'm horrible at reapplying and wearing a hat. <laughs> and well, yeah. New Zealand like and Australia me. have some of the highest rate of melanoma in yeah, the melanoma, world because yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fun times. Now, don't want to estimate <laughs> the amount of things that they used to do in New Zealand. Next tip: ton of activities, ton of stuff, ton of hike, ton of yes, uh, yes. of points to add on your map. So yeah, a lot of people just think there is only a handful of things to do in New Zealand, and that's just a side trip from Australia. Don't do that. There is really a ton don't to do, do here. That. Yes. And 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 even when you plan your itinerary, if you have the luxury of time. When you're driving from point A to point B, make that your whole day activity and add uh, points of interest along the way. There's really a ton of them. And uh, yeah, yes, that's the best that. way to do things. And then you spend one day in a place that you want to you know, stay at and do some activities there. And then you're driving again from point A to point B. And that is your entire day activity rather than try to Correct. drive, do an activity, uh, eat at yes. that place, uh, check into your accommodation, check out the next day and keep moving. Oh man, it's not going to be a holiday. You're going to want to sleep at work on the way back. So, yeah. Right. Well, it's really the best things in New Zealand are free. Yes. And actually, great transition. Hiking would be your best friend in New Zealand. Look at I that. I love hiking. Yes. Which hike do you like the most in New Zealand? Mm. I would say that there isn't a, a hike that I don't like. <laughs> That's the problem. That Every is time true. I go into the bush, I'm like, it, it literally feels like Jurassic Park. It does. You come in and you're like, where am I? This is so amazing. I try to do it every day because I have one by my house and I'm just, I love it. it so for people that grew up watching movies, the dinosaurs are not real. So it feels like Jurassic Park, but it's safe. <laughs> it's safe. Yes. Please, no snakes. Yeah. We're not Australia. You yeah. can come on in. Here you go. If you're an American living abroad, listen up. We are entering or we are currently in the worst time of year tax season and if you hate doing your u.s taxes so if you don't know if you're an american citizen no matter where you live and work anywhere in the world you have to pay american taxes so if you dread that as much as i do and how hard american taxes are compared to where i currently live in new zealand um then i just wanted to put a little something on my youtube channel this week that i have been working with bright tax i will link them below and they are giving my community 50 dollars off if you want to do your taxes with them because it is so hard to find somebody to do your u.s taxes when you live abroad so if that's you check them out get a discount and let's do our taxes all right and next up where am i on i'm completely lost in this one yes so um if you are coming in New Zealand for only a short amount of time, then we only recommend you to do one of both islands. So therefore, yeah. you have to kind of study up a little bit and kind mm -hmm. of learn about the difference between the North and the South Island. Yeah. Um, obviously, I can go over uh, hours and hours talking about both islands, but in short, the North Island will be more volcanic and a lot of rich Maori culture, and the mm -hmm. South Island will be more Jurassic. Uh, all those uh, thick forests, mountainous, yes. uh, snow-capped mountains, yes. all these kind of things, and amazing wildlife, such as, you know, in The Kapoor bottom line Island. is you're not going to be disappointed with either of no, them. No, of course, but they are different, so they if you have to pick only one of them, just, you know, study up, because yeah. both of them are not, yeah. you know, North doesn't They offer different up. things. Yes. So, yeah, that's good. 
All right, uh, talking about food, you need to try the local cuisine. There is some really good food in New Zealand. Fish and chips is fresh right out of the water, delicious. You and the seagulls will love it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it's really it's really awesome. You have also uh, yeah. traditional Maori food, such as the hangi, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, plenty yeah. of awesome food. And, and you will yeah. have to try local because there isn't really chain restaurants here. I mean, you other than the American ones, so you always have the McDonald's, Burger King, yeah. Subway. Pizza Hut. Klaus Junior. <laughs> Klaus Junior. I like Junior. I mean, you know, that's, that's, they that's the no chest of them all. That's the, <laughs> it is. You know, it oh, is. It's you see the ads? That's Hardee's if you're in the U.S., by the way. Um, but yeah, so otherwise there's not chain restaurants. So it can be, as an American, when you're used to knowing what you're going to get, going into a town and you like, have no idea. Every town will have a fish and chips. Every town will have a cafe, right? Most of them will have at least a Domino's or a Pizza What's Hut. What's your daughter cafe? Huh? What do you order at the cafe? What do I order at the yeah. cafe? And what what kind of coffee? Because it's very different in the mm. U.S., right? Yeah, so the, the most common coffee is a flat white. I probably go with the lattes or I'll go with the mochas. The way that they make mochaccinos here are like, mm, they figured it out. It's not the same as the boring syrup in the U.S., but that's for another. If you want to no. try a hot chocolate or, uh, or mocha at the cafe called The Shelf on the High Street in Oakland, best one in the country. Just my tip. Are you serious? Service. I haven't been there. You've got to. The shelf. I don't know. If it's gonna be, I don't think it's going to be as good as the one in Wellington. That I guarantee it or you get your money back. Not you guys. Is that what you. they say? You, oh. no, I, 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 pay, I pay for the <laughs> coffee. I literally send you the money if it's not better than any other one you've tried in your life. Oh my god. There you go. Well, there's this one in Wellington on Cuba Street that is, it's literally like liquid chocolate, but it's so good. Mm. Try okay. it. Okay. We'll see. I put my money where my mouth is. Okay. All right, I uh, may regret that. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, depending Sorry. on uh, how you're traveling, luxury, uh, budget, family, or anything like that, there is, or even working holiday, um, gap year and everything, there is really options for all different budget and different ways yes, to is. travel around New Zealand but you've got to kind of plan a little bit differently so do make sure that you do research for like the way you want to travel right if you travel as a couple research like couple or honeymoons or, or yes. things like that and you're genuinely going to find some experiences which are absolutely unique that's going to match exactly what you are after and uh, yeah, yeah don't true. be afraid to kind of like actually kind of I know it sounds weird, but put yourself in a box and from that box, you'll be able to actually find things that you usually don't find. It sounds crazy, but I, I, I think it's it's really true for New Zealand. And it's all available to you on the New Zealand Pocket Guide. It is. Yes, oh, it is. that is true. Like, that is that's true. literally the place Sorry, to go. Just... If you want to know anything, you can type in couples and it's everything. It's there great. And then pocketguide.com. Boom, I right. should have had the t-shirt that says that. You should, that, you so, should. Yeah. What the heck is this? I know. Uh, all right. Uh, Another thing that's going to be taken as a complaint, which is not, you know, when on the roads, traveling around, don't expect you're going to get good Wi-Fi everywhere. Uh, nope. I mean, I, I work online and uh, you work online. And how goes the Wi-Fi in the local cafe? Mm. Okay. The lack of word tells you a lot because she's never like. I use words. my hotspot a lot. Let's yeah. just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so do be aware that, you know, there is still even some accommodation that will provide you with like a 20 megabyte voucher that you can just, you have to log in onto a oh. certain browser, enter a code and you have 20 megabyte whoop, whoop, to use online. I mean, there is still these kind of things happening around New Zealand. So just do be aware that you may have to unplug, which is definitely not a bad thing. Right. It is a it's good true. thing to unplug sometimes. That's what actually makes a holiday a holiday, you know, um, yeah. forget your phone at the hotel. Wow, change your life. Um, you may not even be able to get through this whole video on that internet. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Hell no. There is no way. All right, uh, for you Americans, I included this one just oh, for you guys. Tipping is go. not mandatory in New Zealand, yes, is it? Yes, it is not mandatory. You probably have talked about that to yes, death I on have, your channel. Yes, I have you? talked about that. Not to yeah. death, I would say, but you know, people are always asking me. People from New Zealand get stressed going to the US and tipping and like how much they should do and all of that. But here, no, there's, it's not expected. You can, if you want, sometimes they'll have like the tip jar at, you know, at the cafe or at the bar where you pay and you pay, you know, you get up and you pay. They're not bringing you your check. This is yes. probably the biggest change if you're coming from the U.S. You're just sitting there forever. You've got like, to do your part, okay? You're like, <laughs> they don't make you cook the meal, but you've no, got to go all the... You have to get up and pay at the bar or pay at wherever it's obvious. And if you're at the pub, you actually have to walk to the bar to also order. Uh, no one's going to come and ask you for your order if you're at the pub. No, if you're at the restaurant, true. someone may show up if you're deaf, you like it. But uh. <laughs> And yeah, and like when I go into a restaurant when I first came and they were like bringing me water. Not everybody just brings you water. Like they'll have their own like cooler where you get your own water. Yes. You get your own water. Um, but... 
it was funny. I was with people when I first came and they were like, brought water to the table and they're like, oh, they're bringing it because you're American. <laughs> <laughs> because they heard the accent and were like, you're expecting water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they also know that you made tips, therefore they want the tip. Mm. So here you go. All right. Still uh, sticking with the difference yeah. between the US and uh, New Zealand, okay. make sure that you research uh, which travel adapter you need yes. for New Zealand, uh, for all your appliances, for your phone charger and everything. And also just do a little bit of research because the cheaper adapter is not necessarily the best. Uh, there's plenty of adapters yes, with extra true. little things, with extra like USB plugs and everything like that. There's really a lot of different adapters which are really great. There's some of them that will last you a lifetime mm -hmm. and go through every uh, countries and everything like that. So yeah, do research for your adapter. Yeah. You do need one and also research if you can get a good one um, yeah and definitely you know from from the us it's 120 volt to the 240 here and so you can it's fine to use your, your curling iron or your hair straightener uh, with the adapter so a lot of people ask me that question here you go uh next step is i read it i was like i'm gonna remember it and then i forgot it anyway <laughs> tap water is drinkable here yes, in new zealand and, and so it doesn't good. taste like chlorine so it's you know. so good i love yeah. the water here you guys it's so great and it's so really that's 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 a real selling point. Save the planet. Save money. Don't buy. Uh, don't, don't give buy more money plastic. to Nestle. They're evil. Uh, stop buying Aquafina. Mm -hmm. Toss it and uh, drink some water from the tap. Here you go. Whoever thought we'd be spending money on water? I know that's crazy, yeah, that's right? That's a brilliant marketing campaign. Right? Do I do I have the right to read the next one? Or oh is yes. It, um, oh, it's fine. Yes. Can I read that? <laughs> okay. No, please, because that's a big one. You okay, need I'm it. gonna read it. You need. To don't hear be this. a dick to the environment. Yes. Okay. Don't. So often I walk. Uh, you know, I do some of the most popular walk around New Zealand and everything, and I see rappers on the floor and all these kind of things. And in Italy, you can see us on our videos doing activities in New Zealand. Pretty much every time we have to pick up a rapper from somebody else. Don't be addicted to the environment. Uh, yeah. If you do bring something into national parks, into hikes, into places, just live with it and dispose of it properly. properly. And uh, yeah, think about uh, other stuff. For example, if you are a lady that travels around New Zealand and really yes. cannot live without your hairspray, know that aerosol cans, for example, cannot be properly recycled in New Zealand, for instance. So you may want to pack it with you and get it properly recycled in the US. For instance, just one oh, thing, um, nice you know, just those kind of, uh, just kind of thing. Just be mindful, you know, yeah. we only have one planet. You know, uh, we're not all Elon Musk. We can't all go to Mars. And uh, I think that's interesting. That you, I did not know that you couldn't recycle the aerosol. Just let me use batteries. Have you tried to recycle batteries in New Zealand? Yeah, like I have to bring it somewhere. Yeah, so yeah. You, there's, you know, you have there's to jump a, through many different hoops. There's an extra, okay, so yeah. you can put it somewhere. Because I find it interesting. I have a hard time finding hairspray that's not aerosol here. Like, a, like the yeah, spritz. Yeah, because we have... Why like, don't they sell that? New Zealand's then? a little bit behind on regulations, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, your options... Oh, is that why? Yeah, okay. your options would be like uh, those kind of... You know, there's some which are like actually just like spray like your... You know, like those... Like yeah, yeah, the, yeah, gun like sprays. That. Yeah, yeah. The gun, <laughs> no, no, there's not the aerosol spray, but the actual gun spray. Yeah, yeah, so there is there's some of those available. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's some mousse available, those kind of things. But still, mm. like there's a bit of aerosol Bring in there. Your own so yeah. And why am I talking about mousse? I, I mean, know. Honestly, I, these are all my tips. Hey, these are actual tips. I'm giving uh, you ear tips. Uh, white girl. So right now we're gonna do a little bit of shadow uh, right here on the eyelines. <laughs> all right, ladies. There's a lot of those on YouTube, isn't it? All right. <laughs> Makeup tutorial right here. Yes. Uh, international makeup with, uh, with Tara and Robin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, the last tip is a little bit of a plug. Check out nzpocketguide.com. Yes, check Seriously. it out. It's the best. Honestly, it's the best. Yeah, we put our heart and soul into that website. It's all free for you guys. There is thousands and thousands of articles. There's full itinerary we already planned for you guys. If you want to check them out, you can literally just print them, hop in your car and do all that. And uh, yeah, thousands of tips. I don't know. We like what we do. Um, yeah, no, we it's think really great. I was just planning tips, yeah. my, my trip for uh, in a couple of weeks and I was like, I know where to go. And I read everything and it was all these details I didn't know. It's, not, it's true. Easy as. You heard it here first. Thank you so much for giving us and talking through that. I actually learned some stuff <laughs> and I've been here for six years. So, <laughs> so yeah. So thank you, Robin, for joining us today. And I hope this was helpful to you guys and we'll see you next week. And hit like and subscribe. Yes. People say that, right? Yeah, they do. Do that. <laughs>